welcome again, guys, to another G Squared Academy video. Yes, you know, you know, excellence is epitomized. You know, we simplify for you. All right. Today, we're going to be looking at um, the 2005, January 2005, Paper 3, Question 2. And I'm just taking them one at a time because, you know, you don't want to really rush things, really. But anyway, so the question is already on your screen as you can see but before i proceed i just want to thank everyone for subscribing like liking sharing my videos for all the comments that you guys have made on the videos i'm thankful for them as well um i know a lot of you have been watching the videos but not subscribing subscribe guys come on subscribe to the channel hit the notification bell so you can get a video every time i post you know it's going to be helpful to you right Anyway, so let us proceed. So today it says chlorine is an important industrial chemical and great care must be taken when handling it invariably. It is prepared industrially by electrolysis using a cell such as the one shown in figure two. And this here is figure two. You have your electrolyte in, you have your titanium anode, your nickel cathode, your ion exchange membrane right there between the electrodes. And you have this thing, this pipe thing for a byproduct which comes out. So this is the electrolysis, um, the electrolytic cell set up for the preparation of chlorine. Now your job, your task here is to outline the industrial preparation of chlorine um, using a cell such as in figure two, including your answer. So you're supposed to outline basically. Um, and if you don't understand what the term outline means, I'm gonna put um, a, a video right here, top right, um, here describing those words that students generally misinterpret in exams, scientific terms that they misinterpret in exam. So you can watch that video. So outline. Um, it says name the electrolyte and um, the ions present. So let's just do that now quickly. The electrolyte that you're gonna be using here would be brine. And let me just write text. It's brine, right? So you're using brine. Coming up here, there you go now, brine. And brine is, of course, concentrated um, sodium chloride. It's conch sodium chloride, okay? Which means that, of course, the CL capital C, um, which means, of course, that concentrated means that it is dissolved in water. But you have little water, but a lot of sodium chloride. So it is aqueous in nature, right? but you have very little water. So the ions present now in solution would be, of course, your ions present in solution would be your sodium ion, of course, sodium, I'm just writing that. Don't much how it looks too much on the sodium. Because it is in water, you're gonna have H plus ions as well. And you're gonna have your chloride ions, okay? And your OH ions, all right? So you have your sodium ions, your H plus ions, your chloride ions, and your hydroxide ions. Okay, so let us get back to the question now. So you have named the electrolyte. The electrolyte is brine or concentrated sodium chloride. You have identified your ions. So now the next question says, the principles which determine the ions that are preferentially discharged at the electrodes. Now this is, um, there are a number of things to consider here. Um, to determine what discharge is at the electrodes. All right, so let's go back to our whiteboard. Um, these are the ions in solution. We have two cations, we have two anions. Now, in no particular order, here are some of the things that you need to consider. One, the type of electrolyte. We are using concentrated sodium chloride, okay? The electrolyte is not molten. If the electrolyte was molten, then only the ions of the electrolyte would discharge. Once it becomes now aqueous, right, you have introduced water, which means that you have the H plus ion and you have the OH ion um, being introduced that. So it changes what discharges at that point in time. So now that we know it's a aqueous electrolyte, the next thing to consider is, is it concentrated or is it dilute? It is concentrated. So the rule basically says that if the electrolyte is concentrated, then the anion, the anion, no, we're looking at the anion, the anion in greater quantity would 
be discharged, the anion in greater quantity. You will have two anions, chloride and OH, right? The OH comes from the water and the chloride comes from the sodium chloride. Okay, now it's concentrated sodium chloride, which means that you have little water and lots of sodium chloride. So the anion, which would be in greater quantity, would be the Cl minus ions. Okay, so at the anode, we're expecting the chloride ions to discharge. All right, now the concentration doesn't necessarily affect the cations that much. Okay, but what will now affect the cation is the position of the um, species in the electrochemical series, all right? And so based on the electrochemical series, which you're now seeing on the right-hand side, based on the position, of, um, the, the position of the species in the electrochemical series, you realize that hydrogen is way below sodium, and so therefore um, hydrogen would discharge, okay? Sodium being so highly reactive. Okay, so we have now identified the two ions um, that would discharge our H plus ion and our OH ion. Okay, now we could have considered also the nature of the electrodes, right, in determining what discharges, especially um, at the anode. But in this case, we're working with basically two inert electrodes, so those would not affect what is discharged. So just to recap, what are we looking for to determine what this charge is? The type of electrolyte. Is it concentrated or sorry, is it aqueous or is it molten? All right, we have sorted that out. Now we figured out it is aqueous. What is the type of electrolyte we're losing? Is it concentrated? Is it dilute? It's concentrated. It's concentrated. So certain ions will discharge based on their concentration in the solution, based on the number that is present. Okay, and then for the cations now, the position of the element in the electrochemical series determines what discharge is. Okay, so let us then now go back to the problem. All right, so we have now outlined the principles that determine what is preferentially discharged. Let's look now at the reactions occurring at the electrodes, including ionic equations. So it basically means that we need to write ionic equations for the reactions at the electrodes. I'm just, I'm not gonna clear this off. Um, so we're gonna write the cathodic reaction, sorry, the anodic reaction first. So we have chlorine, right? Which is chloride ions. And this is aqueous, of course, AQ, right? Put that in a little bracket there. Don't worry about the writing. And this is gonna produce chlorine gas, Cl2. There you go. And this is a gas. Now, for this process to occur, right, we first need to balance the equation, right? So we have two chlorines over here and only one over there. So we're going to put a two there. So we have balanced the equation now in terms of number of atoms. We need to balance it now in terms of charge. The charge on both sides need to be equal. Over on the left-hand side, there are two chloride ions. Each has a minus one charge. So since there are two of them, the overall charge is minus two or two minus. Right? So we need over here now to be two minus. So we're gonna add two electrons because electrons are negatively charged species, right? So that's our two electrons there. Okay, then now um, for, oops, oh, sorry. Right, so then now we're going to write the, I'm gonna have to clear something here now. Then now we're gonna write, um, or cathode reaction, I'm just clearing this up. Okay, good. So now we're gonna write our cathode reaction. And for the cathode, we know hydrogen discharge. So hydrogen now is positively charged and that is gonna produce hydrogen gas. There you go, this is hydrogen gas. And that's a gas in bracket. And this is aqueous over here. Okay, that one went a little bit. So now we have two hydrogens here and we have one over here, so we need to balance it. Okay, good. So charge over here is two plus. There are two hydrogen ions. Each of them have a plus one charge or a one plus charge. So the charge over here is two plus. The charge over here is zero. We can only add or subtract electrons. 
So the only thing that we can do here now is add two electrons over here. So when we add two electrons, those have a negative charge. So basically it becomes um, plus two minus two, which is equal to zero. So this is plus two plus minus two, and that's equal to zero. And the charge over here would also be equal to zero. So these are your um, electrode reactions. Okay, so we're pressing on now. All right, back to the question, let me see. So the next question now says the role of the ion exchange membrane. So let me scroll back up. You'll notice that there's an ion exchange membrane between the two um, electrodes. And the purpose really of the ion exchange membrane is to allow sodium to go across um, towards the cathodic side so it can freely move. And when it goes across, it's going to combine with um, the hydroxide ions, which are on the, the, the anode side, sorry, the anode side, it will go on the anode side where you have the hydroxide ions. And at that point in time, it will react with the hydroxide ions to form sodium hydroxide. Okay, so the role is just for the free movement of ions really um, between the two, the two um, electrodes. Then it says no name one important byproduct. So that is where the ion exchange membrane would come in very handy because at this time, you're gonna have sodium ions going across the membrane towards the anode side. And of course, this is aqueous, right? Right, and then that's gonna combine with the hydroxide ions, which is also aqueous, okay? To form sodium hydroxide. Okay, which is also aqueous because it would there would be some water present as well. Okay, so that is what would happen. That's an important byproduct. And sodium hydroxide we know is used in the manufacture of bleach. Another important byproduct would, which would be hydrogen, and that of course is used in the rocket fuel industry. Okay, so that's that. Name one important byproduct. The next part of the question, part B, no says when chlorine is passed through colorless solution of potassium iodide, a precipitate is formed. The first thing they want you to do is write a balanced chemical equation for this reaction. All right, so no problem. Let's go back to our whiteboard. Okay, let us clear that up, first of all. All right, so what did they say? Chlorine, and chlorine is a gas, of course. Okay, um, yellow, green gas, green, yellow gas. I'm not really good with colors, to be honest. And you add that to potassium iodide, which is a colorless solution, okay? And this is also aqueous, okay? Yes, aqueous. Then now, what does this produce? This is a non-metallic displacement reaction, non-metallic. So a non-metal is displacing a non-metal. Here you have chlorine, a non-metal, and a halogen, and it's going to displace iodine, a halogen, and a non-metal. Okay, so it's going to take its place. So what you're going to get over on this side is KCl, potassium chloride, which is aqueous, okay? And you're going to get iodine. And let us just check something. If they did mention solid or they said it dissolved, it says precipitate. So you get iodine, you get iodine um, solid present there. All right, so you get a precipitate. So this is gonna be solid, okay? And of course you have the balanced equation. They have two iodines here. So you need to put a two over here, okay? And you have two chlorines here. So you need to put a two here, two. That two was not written that very nice. Let me undo that bit. So you put a two there, great, okay? So this would be your, um, your equation for the reaction taking place there, all right? So it says the reaction um, in BI above is a redox reaction, yes? With reference to oxidation numbers, show why this is a redox reaction. I identify the oxidizing and reducing agents. So let us look at that again. Okay, all right, so first thing that you want to do when you're doing this is you want to write down the oxidation numbers. You could write them below or above the species. I think I'll write them above. Now, if an element is not bonded to another element, its oxidation number is zero. 
chlorine is bonded to itself here. It's bonded to itself, not to another element. So it's oxidation number zero. All right, potassium, it's a very active metal. It's in group one, so it's oxidation numbers plus one. Okay, iodine is a halogen, so that's minus one. Potassium still remains plus one. Over here now, to make this equal to zero, because when you sum the oxidation numbers or states of potassium and chlorine, it needs to equal to zero. Um, potassium is plus one, so obviously this must be minus one. All right, and then know that iodine over here is not bonded to anything. So it's oxidation number is zero, all right? So now we can see which species oxidation number has changed. The chlorine had um, changed from zero to minus one, which means that the chlorine was reduced, okay? So Cl was reduced, and I'm gonna text that because writing now is difficult. So the chlorine was reduced, and the species which is reduced is the oxidizing agent. So this is the oxidant or the oxidizing agent. Okay, and put a dash there. So chlorine was reduced from zero to minus one is a reduction. So it was reduced. And if the species is reduced, it is the oxidizing agent or the oxidant. Okay, then now let's look at potassium. Um, potassium for potassium now, it changed from plus one to plus one. It did not change. So really it is a spectator in this reaction. The iodine now, or the iodide ion here changed from minus one to iodine zero. So that is an oxidation. So the, chlor the iodine was oxidized, okay? So the iodine, right? And I'll text it, write it again. It was oxidized. Oxidized. Right, and if it is oxidized, then it is your reducing agent or reductant, okay? All right, so there you have it. There you have it. You have identified based on oxidation states, the oxidant and the reductant. What has been reduced, therefore the oxidizing agent. What has been oxidized, therefore the reducing agent. All right, trusting that you're getting that. And what's next? That's it, that's your 20 marks. That would be your 20 marks right there. So I'm hoping that you'll find this helpful. I'm hoping you find this helpful in preparation for your paper three exam. Okay, as I said before, very difficult to work because these things require you to be like your teacher in terms of knowledge of chemistry. Okay, so I wish you all the best. Please like, subscribe to the channel, share the videos, um, leave a comment. What, if, is there something that you want me to discuss in a future video, what would you like me to talk about? What do you want to hear? Um, just drop a comment, drop a comment, leave a comment, you know, so we can discuss it, we can talk about it, we can produce that video for you. So I wish you guys all the best in your exams and I'll see you next time.